Thanks for coming to my talk. My name is Sam Anderson, and today I'll be giving a quick overview of how I use machine learning for modeling regional stream flow, with emphasis on better understanding the what, where, when, and why machines learn. So I'll be talking about hydrological models which predict stream flow from weather. And broadly speaking, mapping weather through the stream flow has implications for forecasting and strongly influences how we plan and manage our water. These are important issues, and if we're using machine learning, it's really important to also know why the models are working and so that we can trust them. Today, we'll explore what these models are learning, both in space and through time. So our study region is this portion of southwestern Canada through BC and Alberta, where snowmelt and rain are two very important inputs to the hydrological system. To build a relatively simple model, we use temperature and precipitation as our inputs. To do this, we structure each day of input to the model as what I call a weather image. Each image has three channels being maximum temperature, minimum temperature, and precipitation. Then we create year-long weather videos where each frame is a weather image from the past year. And using the past year of weather through a machine learning model, then we can predict stream flow of the next day at all stations throughout the region. And this machine learning model is really cool <laughs> with interesting spatial and temporal components. So if you have questions about the details there, please come chat with me after. With this model, we can then ask where in space is most important. So consider now just the coastal region. And we might expect that since stream flow in this region is driven by rainfall along the west coast, then the model should be mapping the weather along the west coast to stream flow along the west coast. And that's exactly what we find. Here's a map which shows how much different areas matter for different stream gauge stations. So red indicates the more important areas and blue indicates the less important areas. So overall, the coastal region looks pretty great. And the model is also pretty great in other regions too, like here throughout the central region of our domain. However, things are not always so clear cut. So here in the Northeast, the model is very sensitive in the Northeast, which makes sense, but then it's also very sensitive along the West Coast. And so we might ask, what's going on? What we find is that the model is looking at different places at different times. There turn out to be these two different sensitivity regimes. The first, the model is looking in the Northeast, and this is happening during times of dynamic stream flow. So when river flows are changing day to day, the model is watching the areas nearby the stations. But then in periods of low flow, when the river flows don't really change much day to day, the model is actually just watching the west coast. And we can watch this play out through time where the red sensitive areas shift from being in the northeast region during high flow season to then the west coast in the low flow season. And it's really kind of cool to be able to tease apart where the model is looking through time. But we can also ask, is it more looking at temperature or precipitation? So now consider flow in eastern Alberta. So first, there is a uh, flow peak in spring due to snowmelt. And then flow in summer is driven by rainfall. And here in red is how much the temperature input matters to the model throughout the year we find that the model is most concerned with temperature during spring when the snow is melting due to rising temperatures. And then here in blue is how much precipitation matters to the model. We see here the opposite, where the model thinks precipitation is most important during summer, and that's when rain is driving stream flow. So that too makes sense. So it's really interesting to see that the model has automatically parsed out the relative importance of climatic drivers and how they vary through time in correspondence with when the physical drivers of stream flow change from being snowmelt to being rainfall. So thank you very much. I've shown here so far that our model is automatically learning to focus on different areas and through different driving variables through time. So I'm looking forward to chatting more about this. So if you have any questions, please come by to the poster session and I'll see you then.